Battle of Sheridan Street. Channel 7 News Desk. We have two reports tonight on that continuing story from Sheridan Street. First, let's go to reporter Alan Nelson at City Hall. Report 1. Thanks, Katie. Well, right now, the City Housing Authority isn't working on anything except the Battle of Sheridan Street. It's one woman and her pets versus City Hall, and so far, she's winning. Ms. Hilda Martinez, the director of the Housing Authority, has agreed to talk with us. Ms. Martinez, has the situation changed since yesterday? No, Alan, it hasn't. Mrs. Hamilton is still in her house, and she still refuses to talk to us. What are you going to do? It's a difficult situation. We'd like her to come out peacefully. The police don't intend to arrest her, but she's a very stubborn woman. Stubborn? Well, it is her home. Uh, yes, and it's been her home for a long time, I know. But nobody else refused to move. You see, we're going to build 400 apartments in that area. We expect to have about 1,200 people living there when the project is finished. You have to balance that against one person and a pack of dogs. But Mrs. Hamilton was born in that house, and she is trying to give a home to the homeless dogs of this city. Of course. But we have promised to relocate her and one of her dogs to a modern apartment in a senior citizen's project. The other dogs will go to the ASPCA. So, what happens next? We can't wait forever. We want the ASPCA to take all the dogs first. Then we hope to talk to Mrs. Hamilton and convince her to move. We have to do something soon. Thank you, Ms. Martinez. Live from City Hall, this has been Alan Nelson for Channel 7 News Desk. And now to Cindy Wong, who is with Mrs. Florence Hamilton at her home on Sheridan Street. Report 2 I'm standing in front of the only house still occupied on the 800 block of Sheridan Street. We have managed to set up an interview with Mrs. Florence Hamilton, the occupant of the house. She has decided to speak to us, but she has demanded to see me alone except for a camera crew of two. Mrs. Hamilton, our viewers would like to hear your side of the story. There's not much to say. They want me to move. I was born here, and I intend to die here. It's as simple as that. <coughs> Down, Caesar, sit. <coughs> Cleo, sit. But the housing authority really needs to have this land, and they have arranged to relocate you. I know, but I can't take all my dogs. Just one. I love them all, and I need to have company. They're all I have. Come back, Calcardia. <coughs> sit. Sit! How long can you hold out here? Oh, I have plenty of food. People bring me dog food. The city has threatened to cut off my water and lights, but I'll be all right. Thank you, Mrs. Hamilton. You can tell the city for me that I want a house where I can keep my dogs. Not a apartment for senior citizens. Uh, yes, uh... This has been Cindy Wong talking to Mrs. Florence Hamilton, who is fighting to keep her home and pets. For Channel 7 News Desk, back to you in the studio, Katie. Marriage Counseling Jonathan and Barbara Weiner have been married for nearly 15 years. They have two children, Gary, aged 11, and Debbie, 9. During the last couple of years, Jonathan and Barbara haven't been very happy. They argue all the time. Barbara's sister advised them to go to a marriage counselor. A marriage counselor helps married couples to talk about their problems and to solve them, if possible. Sometimes Jonathan and Barbara meet with the counselor separately, and other times they meet with her together. This is Jonathan and Barbara's third session with Dr. Joyce Sisters, the counselor. Oh, come in, Barbara. Have a seat. Didn't Jonathan come? Yes, he's waiting outside. He didn't want to come this week, but, well, I persuaded him to come. I see. How have things been going? Oh, about the same. We still seem to have fights all the time. What do you fight about? What don't we fight about, you mean? We fight about everything. He's so inconsiderate. How so? Well, I'll give you an example. You know, when the children started school, I wanted to go back to teaching again, so I got a job. 
Well, anyway, by the time I've picked Gary and Debbie up at my sister's house, she picks them up at school, I only get home about half an hour before Jonathan. Yes? Well, when he gets home, he expects me to run around and get dinner on the table. He never does anything in the house. Hmm. And last Friday, he invited three of his friends to come over for a drink. He didn't tell me to expect them. I don't think that's right. Do you? Barbara, I'm not here to pass judgment. I'm here to listen. I'm sorry. And he's so messy. He's worse than the kids. I always have to remind him to pick up his clothes. He just throws them on the floor. After all, I'm not his mother, and I have my own career. Actually, I think that's part of the trouble. You see, I make more money than he does. Jonathan, I'm so glad you could come. Hello, Dr. Sisters. Well, I'll be honest. Barbara had to force me to come, really. Does it embarrass you to talk about your problems? Yes, it does. But I guess we need to talk to somebody. Barbara feels that you... Well, that you resent her job. I don't know. I'd like her to stay home, but she's very smart. So really, I encouraged her to go back to work. With the kids in school, she needs something to do. And I suppose we need the money. How do you share the housework? I try to help. I always help her with the dishes. And I help Gary and Debbie to do their homework while she makes dinner. But she doesn't think that's enough. What do you think? I'm not here to give an opinion, Jonathan. I think we're both too tired, that's all. In the evenings, we're both too tired to talk. And Barbara... She never allows me to suggest anything about the house or about the kids. We always have the same arguments. She has her own opinions, and that's it. Last night, we had another fight. She's forbidden the kids to ride their bikes to school. Why? She thinks they're too young to ride in traffic. But then she always complains about picking them up at her sister's. I mean, they can't be tied to their mother's apron strings all their lives. At home with the Baldwins. The Baldwin family is like many contemporary American families. Both parents work. Evan is a lawyer. Lynn is a photographer. Zach, 12, is in seventh grade, and Chloe, 8, is in fourth grade. 7.30 a.m. Zachary, are you ready for breakfast? No, Dad. I have to make my bed first. Okay, but hurry up. Mom's making hot cereal. By the way, what do you want for lunch today? Can I have turkey? I'm tired of tuna. No problem. Mom, I can't find my red sweater, and I want to wear it today. I think it's in the hamper. I'm going to do the laundry later, so you can wear it tomorrow. Can I make a suggestion? Why don't you wear your pink sweater today? Oh, all right. Can you do my hair now? In a minute. I have to get Zach. His breakfast is getting cold. Is Daddy making dinner tonight? Uh-huh. Can we have spaghetti and meatballs? Okay. I have to make a shopping list. I'm going to do the shopping on my way home. Would you check to see if we have any spaghetti, please? 7.30 p.m. Zachary, have you done your homework yet? Yeah, Mom. I did it right after karate class. Great. Let me look at it. Here, Mom. Here's my homework. You did a good job, Zach. Did you have to do anything else? Uh, I also had to do some reading in my history book. And I had to do a crossword puzzle for science. It was easy, though. You're sure you didn't make any mistakes? Yep. I'm positive. Hey, Chloe, what are you doing? I'm making a picture for the story I wrote in school today. Oh, yeah? Terrific. Can I see it? Oh, it's very pretty. I like the colors. Thanks, Dad. Chloe, go look in the kitchen. Is Mom making coffee? Uh, no, Daddy. She's doing the dishes. Oh, I guess I can wait a few minutes. I have to make a call. Are you calling Grandma? No, it's a business call. I told someone I'd call him before 8 o'clock tonight. I hate to do business from home, but he's a special kid. A trip to Los Angeles. 
James Hall has a new job with Lemon Computers in Philadelphia. He's 22 and just out of college. As part of his training, he has to spend six weeks at company headquarters near Los Angeles. It's his first business trip, and he's packing his suitcase. He lives with his parents, and his mother is helping him. Jimmy, haven't you finished packing yet? No, Mom, but it's all right. There isn't much to do. Well, I'll give you a hand. Oh, there isn't much room left. Is there anywhere to put your shaving kit? Yeah, sure. It'll go in here. Now, I have three more shirts to pack. They'll go on top, but there's another pair of shoes to get in. Put them here, one on each side. There. Okay, I think we can close it now. Okay. Where's the tag? What tag, hon? The name tag that the airline gave me to put on the suitcase. Oh, here it is. Now, do you have the key? What key? The key to lock the suitcase, of course. It's in the lock, Mom. There's nothing to worry about. There's plenty of time. Have you forgotten anything? I hope not. And you have a safe pocket for your traveler's checks? Yes, they're in my inside coat pocket. Do you have a book to read on the plane? Yes, it's in my briefcase. What about small change to make phone calls? Check. I have a pocket full of coins. Is there someone to meet you in Los Angeles? No, Mom. I'll rent a car and go to a hotel near the office. They suggested the Hollywood Inn. Do you have a reservation? I hope so. I asked them to make it. The hotel reservation, I mean. I reserved the car myself. Well, take care of yourself and be good. Call us tonight. Thanks, Mom. I will. Oh, I nearly forgot. Here's some gum to chew on the plane. You know, when it's coming down. Oh, no, Mom. Don't worry. I'll be all right. I'll see you next month.